the time has come for me uh, where I really got to sit here and do a Scott Demore appreciation upload. I've had a lot of criticisms of Scott Demore over the years, but it's never been about his passion for the company, for what he's done and continues to do for the company to give it a, you know, give us a viable option to watch on TV. Um, caring about the wrestlers, creating a drama free environment. There's so many good and so many positives that he's done. I've never enjoyed him as an on screen character. I haven't, you know, I haven't been shy when it comes to that. I could do with about a hundred percent less of him on screen, but what he does when he's not on screen and he's behind the scenes, it, it's, it's been excellent. I've had criticisms as well, however, about, you know, we're bringing in people on short-term deals, people in from other companies, and they come and they run through your roster and then leave. And that happens more often than not. It doesn't always happen, but more often than not, come in, win the titles, drop the titles, one time, lose one match, leave. So there's, I, I've been, you know, I've always questioned those kind of things. I questioned how self-aware he was when I felt that the the show for about four years looked horrible. And and I was saying, at what point do we see this on screen and be like, this this doesn't cut it, you know? Obviously now it's it's it looks eighty percent better, but you know, to to sit here and go for so many years. And there's just, you know, I was like, there's no evidence that this guy wants to improve this show. That You know, those were like the, like the criticisms I had. But you got to rewind a little bit and think when he first came on board. And um, he brought Don Callis with him. So, I mean, he didn't bring him, but they showed up together. And I, I do kind of credit Don Callis for bringing some some of the talent that they were able to sign around those times, I thought there were guys who guys and girls who just stood out from the crowd. And I don't know how many was how many of those signings he was necessarily responsible for, but I felt once he left, the signings coming in were were how can I explain? Um, just a little cookie cutter. Some of the guy, you know, they were just I'm like, yo, I can see this wrestler you're bringing in at anywhere else. You know, I did think just this, the personnel when Don Callis was involved was more entertaining for me to watch on TV. That being said, Don Callis, I strongly feel when he took the job to resurrect this company, I strongly feel that he thought they were going to get Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega. This was before AEW became a thing. I, I really, my un- uneducated opinion on all this, I really f- feel that he thought he was getting those guys and that they could turn the company around. And then it turned out they weren't getting those guys. And he ended up leaving Impact Wrestling to go be a manager in AEW. A VP position, as I, I believe that's what he had, to go be a manager and try travel with his which tells me that's all he ever wanted he wanted to work with kenny he wanted to work with chris jericho which he did a storyline with him as well so when he knew he wasn't getting those guys he's like this job is going to be harder than i thought it was going to be and he bounced but you know who didn't scott demore the reason i say not tony on this upload and i apologize for the up close and personal look at Scott. The reason it's called not Tony is because when AEW first became a thing, I was really excited for it because at the time I was a little hit or miss with the impact product. And I, I desired as a wrestling fan to watch a big arena live wrestling show. I was not 
enjoying what WWE was doing. I had it for a while. I think around 2015, I kind of pulled the plug. I called it quits. And, and I don't remember what the final straw was. It was the um, it was the episode. I know the last episode I watched is when they knocked off the uh, final deletion, which I actually didn't mind what they did. I was entertained with it. But there was something on that particular episode. No, you know what? I know exactly what it was when I watched uh, Chris Jericho versus Dean Ambrose in the in the knockoff of uh, Lethal Lockdown, and they were using the plants and all that shit. And I that was the last. Uh, WWE match I had watched um, now over the course of the years. I mean, I'll watch a pay-per-view, whatever. But as far as a consistent fan, after that match, I was like, I, I can't watch this product anymore. So I just became like a strictly TNA guy at the time. But it did get to the point I desired to watch a big arena wrestling show that was live and unpredictable, you know, that looked really good. So I was, I was excited for AW when it came out. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, the very first show they did, I don't even remember what pay-per-view it was. It wasn't it wasn't all in, it was something else. I was like, yo, I'm really feeling this. I love it. And you know, over the course of the year, Scott um uh, Tony Khan really became the face of the company. And I, I just remember thinking, I wish that Scott would do more to establish himself as the face of the company on social media, not, not on screen, but on social media, you know, like everyone knows who Tony Khan is. Tony Khan would do the unrestricted podcast before every pay-per-view and promote it. And, you know, these were things where I said, man, I wish Scott and the Anthem guys would do this. But as time changed, I was like, This fool Tony Khan's embarrassing. This dude is annoying. And I talked about self-awareness with Scott there for a second. I'd be watching these episodes and they're awful. You know, some of them were just absolutely awful. Some of the matches were absolutely awful. And you hear this guy, we just had a great match, a great pay-per-view. Like he is unable to look like the underdog. And people like to root for the underdog. And Scott does a better job of that. And right now, TNA is looking like a strong underdog. Not an underdog like MLW underdog. But I mean, like one that they're on the rise. You know what I mean? But I I look back at that time. Because, you know, I, I get it all the time that my opinions change on here and I contradict myself and I'm, I'm fully aware of that, but it's because opinions can change. And I don't know what it is in this wrestling world that we, you know, we state an opinion one time and then that's, we have to hold on to that forever. You know? So I look back at some of the opinions I had and I'm like, man, I was really off. I was, I was wrong. I took the wrong approach and I look at it now and I'm so thankful this fucker is not Tony Khan because he he embarrasses the fans. He embarrasses the wrestlers, the company, himself. And Scott's never done that. Yeah, he fucking annoys me on screen with his little fucking headset and all that shit. I, I will always be annoyed by that. There's nothing that he could do on screen that would not annoy me. <laughs> but as far as the man he is behind the stage and the, the the you know the the environment that he's cultivated TNA was always a drama a drama place drama environment it always was there was always something backstage and there was always something in the negative that, something in the media that was negative that they could run with and that just like has not been the case under this dude and the TNA rebrand has been they they knocked it out the park there's there's a, a few tweaks here and there that I'm just like man I just I, I kind of wish it would go 100% instead of 90% you know um but I'm watching this Royal Rumble last night and Jordan Grace cr- coming down and it's like like that's the the product of good businessmen getting in the same room and doing business you know Triple H would have not not done that for one of 
Tony Khan's people. Tony Khan's out there taking unnecessarily taking shots at WWE, looking like a freaking idiot. And their company is so ice cold right now. And I'll watch a match here or there, but this company that I was enjoying every week just now is unwatchable and unbearable for me. And TNA is hot. Like I never would have thought TNA would be the hottest promotion at one point and AEW would be the coldest promotion. I just, I, I would have never in a million years thought that. But for those of you who like really follow me on a regular basis and I, I make my comments about Scott and I give him these nicknames and whatever, you know, Scott, the headset, Scott, the cringe. Yeah. I, I do think he is better served behind the cameras, but we couldn't, we wouldn't be here where we're at today as fans and people who enjoy wrestling. If it weren't for this dude, you know, they can't, you can't just bring anyone in and do what he's done. And I knew like Scott was a businessman before this same with Don. So that's why I was like, yo, I think those are good mindsets to have, you know, people who've had success in other areas coming in and doing this. This is not like Tony Khan who was handed a bunch of money because of his father. Like these guys work their ass off to get to where they are. And that's the kind of person you do want running a, a wrestling company, you know, cause they, they know how to make good decisions because they've been doing it for years. So yeah, Sometimes I'll question things that I see on my screen and it, it, it just does not change how I feel um, about what he's doing for this company. And I'm, I'm so thankful he's not Tony Khan, that he's not embarrassing the wrestlers and he's going to, he's not driving wrestlers off. The only person who drove wrestlers off was freaking uh, Don Callis and he's gone, you know? But I think we can look back and we can see what we think are mistakes, you know, allowing Kenny Omega to come in and embarrass the entire roster, allowing Tony Khan to cut these stupid commercials, embarrassing the impact roster. We can look back and we can question all those things and say, what the fuck was he thinking? But maybe he thinks that about himself, too. too. You know, maybe he's like, what the fuck was I thinking? So we got to appreciate Scott. He is not Tony Khan. Thank God he is not Tony Khan. We never want him to be Tony Khan. We just want him to be Scott Demore. Fuck it, Scott the headset.